Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the responders' new suit bids. So this is a different way of saying hello to your partner once your partner has opened the bidding. So if you recall, we've been looking up to now at the basic rules for you to reply to your partner if they open one of a suit. And the two areas we focused on previously were what were termed limit bids. That meant that in your response to your partner, you were actually limiting your hand to the number of points that were held. And your partner was able to pass if they didn't want to continue on. Well, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at you bidding a new suit. You're going to change the suit from your partner's opening suit. And a change of suit bid is forcing. A forcing bid means that your partner must rebid. You will remember the rule for responding when your partner has opened the bidding one of a suit. You must squeak with six. So if you have six high card points, you must respond to your partner. When you bid a new suit, you are promising your partner that you have six or more high card points if you bid that new suit at the one level. But if you bid your new suit at the two level, you'll be promising your partner you've got 10 high card points or more. You don't have to jump up to the two level to show those 10 points. If you can bid at the one level and show six plus, that's fine. But if you're forced up to bid at the two level to show a new suit, then you must have 10 or more high card points to make that change of suit. These bids are unlimited. At the one level, they're simply saying six plus, And at the two level, 10 plus. That's why they are forcing, because you could be sitting there with opening points or more yourself. So your partner, who has opened the bidding, must bid again. So when you're changing the suit, which suit do you bid? Well, you're going to bid your longest suit. Or you can bid your lowest available four card suit. Or your higher ranked five card suit. Let's have a look at changing the suit in action. On this hand, your partner has opened the bidding one heart. What are you going to bid? Well, here, you don't have a fit in hearts, do you? Your partner's opened the bidding one heart. They've got at least four. You've only got three. You count up your high card points. You'll find here that you've got eight. Remember the rule, you must squeak with six. So what are you going to bid here? Well, you've got five spades, haven't you? So you can change the suit. Your bid is one spade, saying to your partner, I've got six plus high card points here, and I'm promising you at least four spades over to you, and your partner must bid, because by changing the suit to one spade, you have made a forcing bid. Have a look at this hand. Your partner has again opened the bidding one heart. What are you going to bid? Well, if you count up your high card points, you've got 13. So you immediately know that you and your partner are heading to game. But there's no need to rush anywhere because you're going to change the suit. That means you won't get passed out because your partner knows if you change the suit on them, they must bid again. So what will you bid here? You haven't got a fit in hearts. You can't support your partner at this stage. They've promised you four, you've only got three. So you haven't found an eight card fit. Well, once you've got 10 or more points, you can bid up at the two level. You've got five diamonds there, so you're simply going to bid your longest suit. So your response to your partner is two diamonds, saying, well, I can't support your hearts at the moment, but I've got 10 or more high card points. I need you to bid again, partner, and I'm promising you at least four diamonds in my hand. Over to you. Have a look at this hand. Your partner has again opened the bidding one heart. 
what are you going to bid here? If you add up your high card points, you'll find that you've got seven. So remember the rule, you must squeak with six. Now, you have a five card club suit there. But to mention clubs, if you go up the bidding ladder, you would have to bid two clubs. And if you change suit and bid at the two level, you would be promising your partner 10 points, which you do not have. So you cannot bid your longest suit two clubs. However, what you can do is mention that four card major. So your bid here is one spade, bidding your four card suit at the one level, which is only promising your partner six plus points. On this hand, your partner has opened the bidding one heart. What are you going to bid here? Well, you don't have a fit in hearts, do you? Your partner's promised you four over there. You've only got three, so you certainly haven't found a fit at this stage. You've got eight high card points. Remember the rule, you must squeak with six, so you must say something. You have got a five card club suit, but because you've only got eight high card points, you're not able to bid those up at the two level. Because if you were to bid two clubs, you would be promising your partner 10 points, which you do not have. You haven't got a suit of your own that you can mention down at the one level. And so your bid here should be one low trump. It's the bit of last resort, and it's saying to your partner, well, I can't support your hearts. I'm not able to bid up at the two level. I've got six to nine points. Okay, so you've opened the bidding, your partner has responded, and now it's down to you to make your rebid. Now, if your partner has changed the suit on you, you must rebid because you might have gain points between you. You can't pass once your partner has changed the suit. So what are your options? Well, you can agree your partner's suit if you've found a fit. Your partner may have mentioned a suit and you have four cars in that suit as well. Or if you can't find a fit, you can bid no trumps. You may be able to bid another suit if you have a second suit to show your partner. Or you may be able to bid your original suit again to show you've got extra length. And whilst doing all these things, you're going to also need to describe in your rebid the strength of your hand, the quality of your hand, whether you are minimum, nearly game or game. Now, if that sounds to you like I'm asking you to tap your head and rub your stomach at the same time, it is. It is difficult to get to grips with all these concepts and put them all together and give the right rebid. But we'll have a go and given practice and time, you will be able to do this. So the first thing to do is to look at your hand and decide what sort of hand you have got. Is it a minimum hand of 12 to 15? Is it a hand that means you are nearly at game, so you have an invitational hand of 16 to 17? Or have you got a game going hand of 18 to 19 points? Remember you've opened that bidding because you've got 12 to 19. And every time you pick up a hand now, you want to narrow it down and think, well, what sort of opening hand is this? Where in these bands does my hand lie? We're going to look first at you supporting your partner's suit. So you've opened one of a suit, your partner has changed the suit, but you can now support your partner's suit that they've mentioned. Well, if you've got a minimum hand of 12 to 15, you're simply going to raise your partner's suit one level. If you've got a close to game hand where you can make an invitation to your partner to game, then you're going to jump a level in your partner's suit to invite your partner to game. And if you've got a game going hand of 18 to 19 points, you're going to bid game straight away in your partner's new suit. Let's have a look at some hands to illustrate this. On this hand, you had opened the bidding one heart because you've got opening points here and you have bid your longest suit. 
your partner responds to you one spade. Can you pass? Certainly not. Your partner has just changed the suit. That is forcing and you must rebid. But what do you think of your partner's suit? They've just promised you four spades. You're delighted, aren't you? You've just found a fit in a major. You've got four spades as well. So you've found your eight card fit. So the action you need to take on your rebid here is to support your partner's spades. You count your high card points, you've got 14. If you recall 12 to 15, that's a minimum opening hand. So your bid here is two spades, explaining to your partner you found a fit in spades and you have a minimum hand of between 12 and 15 points. On this hand, you've opened the bidding one diamond because you've got opening points and your longest suit is diamonds. In response, your partner bids one heart. What are you going to do? Well, the first thing to do is recognize that you cannot now pass. Your partner has changed the suit. It's a forcing bid and you must rebid. What do you think of your partner's hearts? Well, again, you've just found a fit in the major. Great news, that's what you're always looking for. So you can support your partner's suit of hearts. But in supporting them, you must also give your partner an idea of the quality of your hand. You have 16 hard card points here. And so you have a hand which is close to game. That is a hand where you can make an invitation to your partner to game. So your bid here is to jump and bid three hearts, saying to your partner, great news partner, we've just found a fit in hearts. I've got an invitational hand. If you've got more than the minimum, please go on to bid game. On this hand, you've opened the bidding here, one club. You've got 19 high card points. You've got a very strong hand here. And you know the moment your partner squeaks, you're going to go to game. You've opened one club because you've got two four card suits. Remember the rule with four card suits? Bottoms up. And so you have bid your bottom or lowest rank suit first. Your partner has responded one spade. You know you're going to game. You also know that you've just found a fit in a major because your partner has just told you that they have four spades and you have four spades too. So your bid here, you know, you go. Jump straight to the game level, four spades. You may have to consider bidding no trumps as your rebid. And bidding no trumps involves slightly different point counts. Sorry to make this a little more difficult, but they will soon sink in. If you haven't found a fit with your partner from the suit that they've just shown you, then if you rebid no trumps at the lowest level available to you, you're going to be showing 15 to 17 high card points. And if you make a jump in no trumps, you're going to be showing 18 to 19 high card points and you will be forcing your partner to game. Here's an example of these rebids in action. On this hand, if you count up your high card points, you'll find you have 16. You've opened the bidding here one club. Why have you opened it one club? Well, you've got two four card suits, haven't you? The rule with four card suits, bottoms up and clubs is the lowest rank suit. Your partner has responded one spade. You haven't found a fit in the spades and you have got what would be called a flat or balanced hand. Essentially that means you've got a little bit of everything. And when you've got a flat or balanced hand, the bit of no trumps will always be coming to mind. On this hand, because you have 16, you can rebid one no trump because that will show to your partner 15 to 17 high card points and that's where your point count lies. On this hand, 
You've got 16 high card points. You've opened the bidding here and you should have opened it one diamond. Why? Because you've got two four card suits. The rule remember with four card suits, bottoms up and diamonds is the bottom ranked out of hearts and diamonds. Your partner in reply has changed the suit and bid two clubs. Well, you don't like your partner's clubs, do you? But what else has your partner told you there? They've been able to respond to you at the two level. That means your partner has at least 10 points over there. Your bid here is two no trumps, saying to your partner, you've got 15 to 17 points because you're bidding them at the lowest level. Have a look at this hand. You've got 18 high card points here. So you know that if your partner squeaks in the bidding, you're going off to game because you've got a game going hand. You will open the bidding one diamond. Why? because diamonds is your longest suit. Your partner in reply bids one heart. Well, you can't support your partner's hearts, can you? They're only promising you four and you've only got three and you haven't got another suit to mention. You've got what would be described as a flat or balanced hand. You've got a little bit of everything there and so you will be thinking of bidding no trumps. You can't just bid one no trump bidding no trumps at the lowest level because that would show you've only got 15 to 17 and you've got a stronger hand than that. So you must make a jump in the bidding and bid two no trumps, explaining to your partner that you've got 18 or 19 points and that your partnership should be going to game. On this hand, you've got 18 high card points. You open the bidding one diamond because diamonds is your longest suit. This time your partner has replied two clubs. Well, you haven't found a fitting clubs, but what you have found out is that your partner has been able to change the suit and bid their new suit up at the two level. Remember what that means? They've just shown you they've got 10 or more high card points. So. You now know game is definitely on. You've got 18, your partner's got at least 10. So you're going to make a jump in the bidding to show to your partner you've got 18 or 19 high card points. So your bid is three no trumps. Well, that's quite a lot to take in, isn't it? So I'll urge you to go and get a cup of tea and have a break, refresh your brain and come back and we'll tackle part two shortly. Welcome back to part two of lesson four. We're going to look at bidding a new suit in your re-bid. So if you've opened one suit and you're going to give your partner a choice by showing them a second suit, well, if you bid that second suit at the two level, you're going to be showing to your partner that you've got between 12 and 17 high card points. But if you make a jump in the bidding and show that second suit up at the three level, you're going to be saying to your partner, you've got a very strong hand and you're forcing them to gain and that you've got 18 or 19 points. When you show a second suit, you're showing to your partner that you've got an unbalanced hand. It means that the first suit that you showed is now five cards in length and the second suit is now at least four cards. When you have what is classed as a minimum hand, so you have 12 to 15 high card points, you're not able to bid a second suit if it's past your original opening suit. Try and imagine you're going round the clock. If you've opened the bidding one club, for example, and your partner bids one spade, well, if you go round the clock from one club all the way round to your suit again up to two clubs, you can only bid suits between one club and two club if you've got a minimum hand. So if you wanted to mention diamonds, 
and you had to bid two diamonds. You can't do that if you go past your opening suit of clubs. Because if you go through that barrier, you'll be promising your partner a stronger hand. So when you have a minimum hand, 12 to 15, you can only mention your second suit. If you can mention it before you go through the barrier of the rebid of your original suit. I'll try and explain that to you more clearly with some hands as examples. Look at this hand. You open the bidding here because you've got 13 hard card points and your opening bid is one heart. Your partner responds to you one spade. What are you going to bid here? Well, you, you don't like your partner's spades, do you? That's not good news for you. But you have got a second suit to show. So you could mention those clubs. You look at your hand and decide it's a minimum hand, 12 to 15. Can you bid those clubs? Yes, you can, because you've opened the bidding one heart. The barrier would be two hearts. Are you able to mention those clubs before you reach your barrier? Yes, you can. So you'll have opened the bidding one heart and you'll be able to bid two clubs as your rebid. Your partner now knows that you hold more hearts than clubs. Can you see why? How would you have opened the bidding if you had four of each suit? Remember, bottoms up, you would have opened one club, wouldn't you? So the very fact that you have opened that bidding correctly, bidding your longest suit first and have repeated clubs, your partner knows your hearts must have been your longest suit. Now you understand why we spent so much time looking at how to open those suits and the importance of bottoms up and tops down. On this hand, you've got 12 high card points and you will open the bidding one diamond because that's your longest suit. Your partner replies one spade. Well, again, you don't like your partner's spade, certainly not found a fit there. What's your rebid going to be? On this hand, you've got a second suit, it's hearts. Can you rebid your hearts? The answer is no, because to rebid your hearts, you would have to go beyond your original suit of diamonds. Can you see, if you go around the clock, you've opened the bidding one diamond, your barrier is two diamonds. And you can only go through that barrier and bid a second suit if you're able to promise your partner 16 or more high card points, you can't do that here. You've got a minimum hand. So your rebid is to simply repeat your diamonds to your partner and bid two diamonds, explaining to your partner you have a minimum hand, but you have got more than four diamonds. On this hand, you've got 19 high card points. So you've got a game going hand here and you know that as soon as your partner bids, you're going to want to find game. You'll open the bidding here one heart, won't you? Because hearts is your longest suit. Your partner responds to you one spade. Well, they've got at least six points over there and you must bid because they've changed the suit and it's a forcing bid. What's your rebid going to be here? Well, now you must make a jump in the bidding and look excited. You must go past your barrier of two hearts to say to your partner, I've got a strong hand here and I want to force you to game. So on this hand, you're going to jump and bid three diamonds. That will show to your partner that you've got now five hearts and at least four diamonds and you're forcing to game. Let's have a look at another option in rebidding your first bid suit. So you open the bidding one of a suit, then you've actually got more cards in that suit than four. And so your decision is to repeat your suit and explain to your partner you've got more than four cards, hoping to still find a fit in that opening suit. 
Well again, when you rebid your own suit, you must describe the quality of your hand. And it's those same point ranges of showing whether you have a minimum hand, a close to game or invitational hand, or a game going hand. If you repeat your opening suit simply at the lowest possible level at the two level, you'll be saying to your partner, well, I've got more than four cards in this suit and I've got a minimum hand of 12 to 15. But if you make a jump in your suit, you'll be promising your partner six cards in your suit and then you've got 16 or 17 points. If you make a leap to gain, you'll be saying to your partner, well, I've got a game going hand, I've got 18 to 19 points, and I've got a six card suit over here. Let's have a look at you rebidding your opening suit in action. On this hand, you've got a minimum opening hand of 12 high card points, and you've opened the bidding one diamond. Your partner replies, one spade. Now, even though you have a minimum hand, remember your partner has changed the suit. They've promised you six plus points. They might have game points over there, you don't know, but by changing the suit, it's a forcing bid. You cannot pass and you must rebid. Your rebid here will simply show to your partner that you've got a long diamond suit, you can't support their spades. So rebid your own suit two diamonds, saying I've got more than four diamonds and I have a minimum hand of 12 to 15 points. On this hand, if you count up your high card points, you've got 16. You'll immediately be thinking, well, in the range of opening hands, I've got a close to game hand, a hand that is invitational to game if my partner is able to respond. How will you open the bidding here? Well, you'll open your longest suit. You'll bid one heart. Now, supposing your partner responds one spade. Remember, they've changed the suit. It's a forcing bid, so you must rebid. You don't like your partner's spade. You haven't found a fit there. So what's your rebid going to be? Well, you must show to your partner that you've got an invitational hand, that you're close to game. So you need to make a jump in the bidding and show your partner your hearts again. So you should rebid your hearts at the three level and bid three hearts, saying, well, partner, I've got 16 to 17 points over here. And by jumping to the three level, I'm promising you six cards in that heart suit. Can we go to game? Have we now found a fit in hearts? You'll find the handout that accompanies Lesson 4 on the New Zealand Bridge website. You'll also find a quiz with answers. Really do urge you to do your homework. It really helps with the learning process. Remember, any questions, just ask your teacher. They'll be only too happy to help. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed or confused after this lesson, what I can tell you is that means you're perfectly normal and so are 99% of beginners at this stage. So don't worry, Bridge does take time to learn. Just keep trying, keep practicing, you will get there. Good luck and happy bridging.